Shalom, Kahala Yahweh, Bashem Yahshai, Bashem Rukakodash. Double honors, my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect who in the house of David be born again in this generation. And Shalom to the 130 Asherala, who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, who before losing our true heritage were known as and still are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about the tribe of Gad, or what they are known as today, the North American Native Indians. Okay, Primarily, the fact that their identity of being Israelites was known by the second president of the United States, John Adams. We're going to read a letter that he wrote. Let's, uh, but before we get into that, let's read this. This is Genesis. 49 and 19 Gad a troop shall overcome him but he shall overcome at the last now this here is a prophecy of what would happen to Gad and his descendants in the end times this was given by our forefather Jacob okay, whose name was changed to Israel by the Lord now that troop that overcame Gad would be the Edomites, primarily the Calvary, okay? Now, ultimately, the way that Gad is going to overcome at the last is that he is part of the 12 tribes. When I say he, I'm talking about the North American Indians, okay? All the the, the people of the, of the one nation, okay? The Cherokees, the Apaches, right? The Pont, Pawnees, all of them, okay? Because they're all of one tribe, the tribe of Gad which make them one of the 12 tribes of Israelites, okay? Now, there was this letter, when you get into uh, the National Archives, that Thomas Jefferson to John Adams wrote. So actually, in fact, this is, uh, so both of, both, of, both of them knew this, right? And this is back in uh, 1812. So let's go ahead and just read, read this. And you can see what the presidents of the United States uh, knew back then, right? It says, uh, to John Adams, Dear Sir, by our post preceding that which brought your letter of May 21st, I had received one from Mr. Malcolm on the same subject with yours, and by the return of the post had stated to the president my recollection of him but both of your letters were probably too late as the appointment had been already made if we may credit the newspapers if at it you ask if there is any book that pretends to give any account to the traditions of the indians okay this is where it starts talking about the tribe of Gad. Or how one can acquire an idea of them. Some scanty accounts of their traditions, but fuller of their customs and characters, are given by most of the early travelers amongst them. These, you know, were chiefly French, Lafatou among them, and Adair, an Englishman, right? And this guy here, Adair, uh, he brings out a lot of details. Uh, about um, uh, about uh, the tribe of Gad, right? And he shows a lot of similarities, right? We use some of the, his books and, and uh, you know statements today, just because of the how blatant, you know, he makes it that the is that the Native American Indians are Israelites. Okay, well, let's continue. And Englishmen have written on this subject. The former two volumes, the latter one, all in four to on four to but unluckily la fatu had in his head a preconceived theory on the mythology manners institutions and government of the ancient nations of europe asia and africa and seemed to have entered on those of america only to fit them into the same frame and to draw from them a confirmation of his general theory. He keeps up a perpetual parallel 
and all those articles between the Indians of America and the ancients of the other quarters of the globe. He selects, therefore, all the facts and adopts all the falsehoods which favor his theory, and very gravely retells such absurdities as zeal for a theory could alone swallow. He was a man of much classical and, scri and scriptural reading, and his render and has rendered his book not unentertaining. He re resided five years amongst the northern Indians as a missionary, but collects his matter much more from the writings of others than from his own observations. Here you go. Adair too had his link his kink. He believed all the Indians of America to be the descendants from the Jews. Okay? The same law, usage, rites, and ceremonies, and same sacrifices, priests, prophets, fasts, and festivals, almost the same religion, and that they all spoke Hebrew. For although he writes particularly of the southern Indians only, the Catawabs, Creeks, Cherokee, Chickasaws, Choctaws, and whom alone we, he was personally acquainted, yet he generalizes whatever he found amongst them and brings himself to believe that the hundred languages of America, differing fundamentally every, every one from every other, as much as Greek from Gothic, have yet all one common prototype. He was a traitor, a man of learning, a self-taught Hebrewist, and a strong re religionist, and of as sound a map mind as Don Quixote. And whatever did, and in whatever did not touch his religious chivalry, his book contains a great deal of real instruction on its subject only requiring the reader to be consistently on his guard against the wonderful obliquities of his theory. Now, so you see, though this devil, Thomas Jefferson, even though he, he throws shade at both of these people, both of these historians both claim that the Native American Indians wore of the tribe of Gad. And why is that? Well, because, like Thomas, and, Thomas Jefferson said, they had observed all these similarities in in the Indians, right? And what does this mean? Well, this means exactly what, you know, what they, these two uh, historians, you know, came to believe that the Native American Indians were Israelites, right? And we know today that they are of the tribe of Gad because they fit the prophecy, right? Now, devils like this, Thomas Jefferson and, and, and John Adams, they were aware of this fact. Now they may not have believed it, right? Or they try to, you know, throw it under the, the theory under the, bu the bus, you know, or in their case, under the cart as much as possible, right? Because they didn't want to believe it. They don't want to believe that the people that they were conquering and destroying, killing, raping, murdering, were the children of God, right? But again, there's tons of other, uh, uh, you know, books, other, of, you know, groups, for example, the Mormons, right? The Mormons understand very clearly that the Native American Indians and the Latinos are the Israelites of the Bible, okay? And you have many uh, people from America's history who are connected to the Mormon race, okay? So again, the whole idea that the Indians are not the, the Israelites is, is profound, especially when you have archeological proof Right, what you're looking at right here is a stone known as the Las Lunas Ten Commandments stone. Okay, it's a uh, in New Mexico, and it is the oldest uh, Ten Commandments written in Paleo Hebrew, right, or what we refer to as Lashawan Kodash, right, the Holy Tongue, right. And you can see here outlined is the name of Yahweh, right, in the Ten Commandments. Now, some devil came by. And, and try to chip all this away, but he only got through the, the first line, but you can still read it, right? But the point being is this was found over here in the Americas, okay? In New Mexico, 
right? Far further than any visitor or any explorers from Babylon back in the day would have went, okay? This is from the, the Indians, okay? Now, other things in that Lost Linus stones, you have the, this Decalogue stone, right? Which basically is an is a image of uh, Moses. This says Moses right here, right? And also in Paleo Hebrew, in the front and the back, right? And it was in it. It was a. It was a. It was an artifact found in a burial, in a burial pit, right? So it was covered in this little shell. But this is ultimately, uh, you know, the, the things that are amongst the Indians, right? Another popular thing is the Chief Joseph tablet. Okay, it, it's an Assyrian tablet, a sales receipt, and a list of sacrificial animals, right? Because you see, why is that important? Well, you see. Chief Joseph is of the northern kingdom of Israel. And when you read, let's actually read it real quick, 2 Ezra 13 and 40, and seven, which this took place around 729 BC, is this scripture says, those are the 10 tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Oshea, the king, whom Salamansar, the king of Assyria, here he goes. Salmons are king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. Right? So check that out. So where did the, where did the Assyrians carry the Israelites to? Where did they, they carry them to Assyria? Right? You can read the book of Esther. You can read the book of Tobit. Right? This took place all in that area. This is why uh, Esther took place over there in, in the, the land of, of Persia, man. You know, it also... This is why uh, um, uh, the Book of Tobit took place in Ecbatana, you know, because this is where the Northern Kingdom had had basically dwelt for about a hundred years, and this is why Chief Joseph, a, a descendant of the tribe of Gad, right, he had an Assyrian tablet, okay, because this comes from his ancestors. What, what does he say? In 1877. Chief Joseph, leader of the Nez Perce, Nez Perce native Indian tribe, revealed his ancient artifact to General Nelson A. Miles. It was a pendant, a one-inch square clay tablet with Assyrian writing. Chief Joseph said the tablet had been passed down in his family for many generations. So you see that? Chief Joseph didn't just find this one day right at the river brook no man this was passed down through his family like he said for many generations and not only that but his sacred medicine bag bears the assyrian star look at this man look that's the assyrian flag here and this right here is the assyrian uh, logo man so you see that these are all symptoms and characteristics of a of a of a nation who has amnesia Okay, us Israelites, the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, we have lost our heritage, right? According, and that fits prophecy according to Jeremiah 17 and 4, that we would forget, that we would lose our heritage that the Lord gave us, right? But we would ultimately gain it back at the end, right? Well, let's continue to read this. It says, but they took this counsel amongst themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go further into a country where no mankind dwelt, right? And this happened after Babylon came and conquered Assyria. And for the most part, all the slaves that were in that country were, for the most part, not set free, but they were left to their own devices, right? Some stayed in servitude, others went back to Israel, but the majority of the Northern Kingdom decided to do this, to go into a new country so that way they could start over again, right? Because they understood what happened when they, you know, went against uh, prophecy, right? It says that they might there keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. And they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. For the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood till there they were passed over. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely a year and a half. And the same region is called Azareth, which basically means unknown land, then dwelt they there until the latter time, and now when they shall begin to come. And they is talking about the southern kingdom, the 
so-called Negroes, which would eventually come to the Americas in the North Atlantic slave trade, right? This fulfilled the prophecy that the Lord would bring the Israelites back into bondage again through ships, right? The Northern Kingdom went through ships here, explained in 2nd Ezra 13 and 40, right? And they didn't, you know, become slaves until, you know, uh, you know, a few hundred years later when they were found by the, the Spanish and the other European countries, right? But ultimately, prophecy played out, okay? You have other things, right? Like the, the uh, Grave Creek Stone found in West Virginia, okay? This here is Paleo-Hebrew, right? Tha is Ah and stuff, and you know, but these are all, you know, characters, man, uh, that are, are that, that's ancient Hebrew, right? Here is what's known as the uh, Keystone uh, Rock, right? It looks also kind of like a plummet, right? If you, you understand what a plummet is, it's the way you found, find a straight down, um, uh, whatever is straight down, right? You use this in measuring or, or uh, finding um, measurements when you're building a house or you're building, a, you know, stone walls or archways, man, right? You hang, you, you hang a string and then basically this hangs down perfectly straight, right? And then you find your, your, your level, right? And then when you look, for example, at the uh, old Negev from Colorado, compare this language here listed in the white compared to uh, Paleo Hebrew and also the Assyrian Hebrew, man. Look, Kwa, look at this, man. Same character, right? Another example would be, uh, let's see, uh, basically Ka, right? You got the, the three lines, then you got Tha, right? The X, then you got Wa, right? You see Ga, same thing, man. Same letters, right? And then you got Da, you know, show, shows you. And then you got Ah, look at this, man. See that? So you see, the similarities are all there. And why is that? Because the Native American Indians, like Thomas Jefferson and John Adams knew, you know, they are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of, man. This is Baruch 2 and 30. For I knew that they would not hear me, because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves, right? And that's ultimately what's going on, man. You're seeing a lot of Native American Indians waking up to understand that they, as a, as a, to as, as a whole, are of the tribe of Gad, or Sem Seminole Indians, okay? And that they are one of the 12 tribes of Israel, right? There's been many... Uh, so-called Native American Indians, you know, coming out, showing that, hey, that they are the Israelites. And, you know, they're understanding this, right? They read the prophecies. They see how it lines up with their own um, prophetic stories and everything, right? This Hosea, 1 in 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God, right? So here in America, where you've been called Native American Indians, you know, savages, Cherokees, Apaches, right? Uh, you know, here I'm telling you, and the other brothers are telling you that you are the Israelites. You are Yasharala, the prince of the power. Okay, this is this is prophecy playing out. This is Jeremiah 29 and 12. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me. Then ye shall search for me with all your heart, and I will be found of you, saith Yahweh Bahashem Yahushai. And I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations, and from all the places whether I have driven you, saith Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive, because ye have said, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai hath raised us up prophets in Babylon.
right? And Lord will, I'm one of those prophets, right? And if not me, these other brothers out here who are teaching and telling you, Akiyam, that you are the children of Israel, you Negro, Latino, Native Americans. We are the Israelites, right? This is the great news. This is the gospel, right? That we're in our low state now for a reason, because we broke the laws of the Lord, right? But our captivity and our punishment is now at the end, right? Well, when we're at the end of the world of the so-called Caucasians, right? The Edomites, right? This is their end and our beginning, right? The Lord, when he comes back, he's going to place us back in our land. He's going to put it, put us back in our, in our rightful place of rulership along with his only begotten son, Yahawashai, right? Who is the true Hebrew name of the one who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Well, hopefully this video was edifying. I can tell you next time I want to give all praises and honor and glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Bashem Rukokwadash Shalom.